Well, first and foremost, thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. We have a really exciting topic for you. We're gonna cover financial reporting and planning in Power BI with the Actera's platform. Uh, my name is Mike Zach, and what I would like to do is start off with a little bit of an agenda just to get everyone on the same page of what we're gonna be covering today and the topics that we're gonna be going over. The first thing that we're gonna talk about today is really uh, the importance of optimizing and modeling financial data. And the reason why that's extremely important is because we wanna be able to have a single source of truth of information that everyone across the entire organization is working off of. But we do understand the importance of different types of data elements that are gonna tell a complete story about the strategic vision of the organization. We're then gonna get into automating a lot of those financial reports within the Power BI infrastructure, but also being able to leverage other Microsoft tools such as Excel and PowerPoint. We're then gonna get into some of the advanced budgeting and forecasting capabilities that Actaris offers within the Power BI and Excel interface. And then last but not least, we're gonna talk about a brief way to implement a write back technology. And that's really gonna be our main focus today is how does that write back technology work within the Power BI ecosystem? This is a way of introductions. My name is Mike Zach. I am the Chief Operating Officer for Actaris. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm extremely excited to show you our technology today. We're gonna to go through a few slides just to set the foundation of what we do as an organization, as well as a product demonstration that'll be towards the, the tail end of today's webinar. Just a fun fact about myself, I absolutely love to travel. I've been to about 45 countries now. And my favorite country out of every, everywhere that I have been is actually Cambodia. So if anyone has been to Cambodia, uh, hopefully you share the same sentiments as, as myself. If not, I definitely recommend a place to go. Now let's just jump right into the first topic of today, which is just discussing some of the financial reporting and planning challenges that firms face. Maybe a lot of you are in this current situation that are primarily in more of an Excel type of infrastructure. Excel is a great tool. And today we're actually here to tell you that you do not have to get rid of Excel. You can still stay in Excel, but there's a different approach to how we can actually scale that across the organization and mitigate a lot of, a lot of the weaknesses that Excel brings to the table. Now, when we think about an organization holistically, we have sales, we have marketing, we have HR, we have finance, all of these different departments typically work in more of a silo type of approach, meaning they're cut off from other teams and there's not a lot of collaboration that happens between these teams. Yes, maybe through email, through, through teams or through some other mechanism, but the data itself isn't free flowing. And when you don't have this cross-functional collaboration, it becomes very difficult to share data with teams, which that data that you may be able to share with them could help them in their decision-making criteria. In addition to having these silo departments and having data across the organization, it's also the, the fact that we're utilizing tools that are obsolete and maybe not they were not originally built specifically for how we're using them today, especially with the copious amount of data that everyone is absorbing in today's world. And as we all have heard many, many times over, data is really the new goal. We want to be able to use data to help us make decisions faster and more effective. And that's exactly what Actaris and Power BI together will do. The last thing is there's this massive push in AI. And a lot of that was predicated on OpenAI or ChatGPT being introduced back in November. And the, the pressure that people have now with internally to actually leverage AI to make sure that teams and individuals are more productive. Well, the only way that we can start leveraging AI is if we have the quality, uh, quality of data behind the scenes that the AI models can read from and interpret. If we don't have clean data, the AI models aren't going to work effectively. It goes back to that old saying, garbage in, garbage out. We need to make sure that we have a clean environment of all of our data so that way we can leverage the benefits of AI and make teams more productive. So these are some of the challenges that we hear on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're also able to help with a lot of these challenges to make sure that we're 
creating an environment where people can share information freely and the decisions that are being made are holistically and collaborative across the organization. Now, the first journey in getting to this point is making sure that you have an optimal data model for that financial data or for even HR data. A lot of this is scalable across the organization. Today, we're going to focus more on the finance side, uh, but we'll have multiple webinars after this that will focus on other areas of the business. But all of it usually comes back to finance or has some sort of impact on finance. So why Power BI? Well, Power BI is an extremely flexible tool. Nine times out of 10, you're going to see people exporting data out of their current systems, either planning systems, ERP applications, even CRM solutions, and they're going to import that into some sort of business intelligence tool. And Power BI has extremely dominated the market over the last seven years since it started. There's other business intelligence tools like Tableau, Looker, um, uh, but Power BI is a Microsoft product, which means that it works across all Microsoft, the entire Microsoft ecosystem. It's really designed to quickly analyze data, set up that data, visualize the information, and ultimately create a story around your data, which is the most important, cap most important part. It's also the perfect platform to utilize for, for sophisticated XPNA. When you think about XPNA, a lot of the challenges that people have is just reporting and being able to get the data in a more meaningful way. And instead of, like I said earlier, exporting all of the data out of these systems, then importing it into a business intelligence tool, what Actaris has done is we've actually created an XPNA solution or a planning solution inside of where the data ends up, which is that business intelligence tool. So as you're making changes or updates to your budget or your forecast, in a live, real-time way, you're seeing the impact that this has on all the visualizations that you've created across the organization. It also gives you the ability to use this in a web browser. You can use this as an app. You can, you can utilize the Microsoft uh, uh, iPhone app. You can also use this on a tablet. So it's, it cascades across all the different infrastructure and technology devices that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. We can also sleep at night because this is all protected underneath the Microsoft ecosystem and the security elements related to this. Now, the importance of, of data modeling and why Power BI is really one of the best tools to start with your journey in a planning environment well, we have to go back to understanding, well, what is the importance of data modeling or what is data modeling in general? When we think about finance or HR or sales, they all work off of different KPIs. There's, and they also have different types of data. Well, when you connect sales data and finance data as an example, and you bring those two worlds together, typically what you're doing is you're comparing apples to oranges and not apples to apples. So what we need to do is we need to build data models, which is a construct of all the different dimensions and how you want to slice and dice your data. You want to look at things by department, by cost center, by date, by product. It's endless. So we create this structure around your data that is ultimately scalable. And the term that we use that has the best performance is what is known as a star schema data model. The way to think about this is that you have all of your dimensions, product, cost center, department, dates, those are around what is known as a fact table, which is in the middle. That fact table has all of your actual data, whatever you're reporting on. It's either financial data or sales data in the example that I provided earlier. So we want to create these data models, which are then utilized within reporting tools to streamline the information gathering as well as the presentation of that information. So it's extremely important to have these structures in place, not having all of our data in Excel, which again, Excel was never meant to store data. It was meant to visualize data and analyze that information and also sometimes manipulate it very quickly. But when you have a vast amount of data sitting inside of Excel, typically it starts to get be really slow. And that's because it's not, there is no data model. There is no structure to that data. It's all within just a, a template that everyone is using. When we think about data modeling, it can be very, it can be very time consuming. 
with a lot of platforms that are out in the market today. And it could also be scary for people that haven't that aren't used to creating data models or don't even know the concept of data models. And that's where Actaris comes in. Being able to leverage a tool that makes it very easy and self-sufficient to create these data models by indicating to a system what are the different dimensions, the dimensionality of your data model that you're looking for. I want to be able to slice and dice by department, by cost center, by GL account, by date. Once you specify these, the system automatically creates your data model and then publishes this to your Power BI template from or Excel even. From there, that's where all the reporting capabilities come into play. And it's referencing that same structure over and over and over again. Think of it as building a foundation to a home. If you have a solid foundation, that means it's going to be easier to build a home versus a rocky foundation. You know, Yes, you might be able to build that home, but over time, you start adding more and more on top, it may collapse. So it's best to start at the foundation level, which is understanding how do you want to view data? What are the key outcomes that you're looking for and building an optimal data model around that? The other unique thing that Actaris brings to the table by not only just helping you build your data models in an efficient, effective way, it also gives you that single source of truth because these data models are referencing an underlying database. If we think about most systems that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, they're broken down into really three main components. The first component being the UI that we're logging into. Then you have a database component where all the data gets stored. And then you have the interaction between that UI and that database. Well, that database acts as your single source of truth. So anyone referencing that database gets, should get the same information. So let's use Salesforce as an example. Salesforce has its own proprietary UI. Salesforce has its own database. And when you go into Salesforce's UI and let's say create a new opportunity, you're typing in the data within that UI. And at some point you're hitting a save button. When you hit that save button, you're actually writing data back to a database or changing data within a database. So anytime someone runs a report based off that change, they're seeing the same information. Actaris is bringing this concept to Power BI by allowing us to help teams build these data models in a very fast, effective way, and also a smart way, but have that underlying data structure so everyone's working off of that single source of truth. We also have very easy ways to set up time intelligence. So do you want to see things monthly, weekly, daily, yearly, quarterly? Do I want to see things for the first year monthly? Then after that first year, I then want to have everything quarterly. So you set up all these different time elements to slice and dice data to make your job easier. We also help with FX handling for cross-currency exposure and approval workflows, which is definitely important in a planning environment. You want to be able to have people enter data for their budget or their plan, and then ultimately have someone review and approve those before they're actually committed to the overall budget across the organization. And then last but not least, helping helping teams with our what we call the Actaris modeler, helping teams really minimize the repetitive tasks that they have to go through that don't add a lot of value. At the end of the day, none of us like copying and pasting information from one Excel to another Excel or trying to piece things together. There is no real value in that. Yes, it's valuable to the organization because you're putting it together, but the fact that you have to do this, and there's a lot of tools out there, especially with, with Actaris being in that mix, that it allows you to automate all of that for you, all the different the elements underneath that. So what you're doing is you're spending more time analyzing the data versus gathering that data. Once you have the foundation built, and that's the data model, how am I slicing and dicing this information and how am I connecting all of the different data models across the organization? Once you have that set up, which Actaris helps with, we then want to get into the financial reporting. So now we want to bring all of this data that we pulled from our source systems, we built those data models, we've normalized all the information, and now we push this to a tool like Power BI or Excel to bring it to life. Now, the, the, the problems, as was discussing uh, briefly earlier, the fact that you know, in a, in a more manual sense, this takes a lot of time, just pulling data from all these different disparate systems putting this into Excel, copy and pasting, massaging the data. We have, uh, we've done multiple studies, one of them um, indicating that, you know, 72% of finance teams spend up to 10 hours a week on these 
processes of just gathering all the data and putting it together. Either you're getting it from the various departments, you're getting it from various branches globally, but at some point, someone has to put all this together to make sense of it, to bring it in a more of a consolidated type of view. You have, all, with that manual process, you have great risk in human error. I'm sure everyone on the phone that has, ex has experience with Excel understands when someone deletes a cell or a row in one of our macro Excel templates, it breaks everything. And then trying to investigate and find out where that break is also is very time consuming and frustrating uh, more than anything. Now, when we want, now the fact that we wanna automate this entire process. So when we first walk in the morning, we're not worrying about gathering all this data, piecing it together. We wanna just pull up a report that shows us all the information that's relevant to that user. And that's exactly what Actaris and Power BI bring to the table. We help with the data integration, which is one element, bringing that data in, modeling of that data, so creating those data models, and streamlining that all within the Power BI or the Microsoft ecosystem. But it's not, it doesn't just stop there. Right? It's not a one-time load. This is a, this is a process where you need automated data refreshes. So you're viewing the most relevant information to make the most strategic business decision for the organization. So with Actaris, we automate the, the delivery of the data to Power BI, but also the consumption of that data from the various source systems that we're bringing in, which are feeding that data model on a regular basis. So when someone creates a brand new opportunity in Salesforce or a new invoice, or they enter in a budget, you want to be able to have all these pieces come together in a visualization tool instantly. Now, when we think about financial reporting, I like to really refer to that as output. You want to see the data. The data now has come to life, and you can start analyzing, slicing, and dicing. But the next logical step is then to get into budgeting and forecasting, or what if analysis, simulation. Well, what if this data changes? What if my revenue goes up by 10%? What if we hire five new people? You want to be able to simulate this world against your actual data before you actually make a decision. The idea here is what happens if I do this? This is the key term. Substitute that for whatever answer you're trying to get. What if I increase revenue? What happens? What if I decrease expenses? I need to hit a certain profitability for this department for this time period. What do I need to do? And have the system do all the legwork for you and give you the answer. But you can't do that unless you have the foundation. So when we think about budgeting and forecasting, there's a lot of roadblocks that are currently uh, that are currently stopping us from getting to a point of being able to see things in real time. Again, it goes back to this whole manual effort and manual processes, which leads to delays. We're waiting for a branch or five branches to give us the data. Well, we can't complete our budgeting process until that actually happens. Now they get busy, maybe they forget, and we have to keep bugging them over and over again because we need that complete view before we can start making those strategic business decisions. Data is scattered across platforms. It's very hard to make a decision in isolation. You need a collective viewing of all the data across the organization so you have the comfort that you're going to make the right decision based on all this information versus just guessing. We get to a point where organizations struggle to deal with changes in the market because we're very reactive when we don't have a, a good process in place or we don't have a good model in place. Something happens, we react, we solve, and we move on versus being proactive. Well, if we're able to analyze this data in real time and we're able to create more of that simulation type of approach, we can simulate different scenarios, but still be ready if something randomly happens where we can then plug that in and see the impact that it's going to have on our business. COVID, and I don't want to use that term because it's a, such a negative term, but it did disrupt the market in a lot of different ways, not obviously in, not in our personal lives, but more on, on the business side we'll talk about today, where Things happened and we had no idea what was going on. And we had no idea how this was going to impact businesses. What we need to be, if we had a real-time simulated type of approach and we can plug in certain things that are happening in real time to see the long-term effects, then we can start to plan for that instantly versus guessing what we need to do. Guessing works out sometimes. We can guess, maybe we guess right. 
it works out. But other times we guess it doesn't work out and we have no way of tracking, well, did that, well, why didn't that work? And I don't want to make that mistake again. It just makes more sense to keep everything in one place. So that way you can simulate, keep those simulations for next time down the line. And limited visibility. At the end of the day, none of us try to make decisions based on limited information. We try to gather as much information as we possibly can so we can make the best educated decision going forward. We wouldn't do this in our personal lives. We, wanna, we would gather as much information as we possibly can before we decide to go out to dinner. We wouldn't just randomly go out to dinner in certain cases. We'd probably research, well, what, is, what do I have a taste for? What, am I, what restaurants are near me? Uh, so we're doing all of this research and gathering it. And we, on the consumer side, it's, it's made fairly easy to do. But on the business side, it's not as easy to do that. And in some cases, we have to piece all this together. And it takes weeks, if not months, to get to a point of, okay, now I can go out to dinner because I have all the information that I need. Now, there's been a lot of advancement with Power BI over the last seven years. And Actaris has been really on the forefront of that by making sure that people that are familiar with Power BI, that are familiar with Excel, can, can still continue to use those solutions and build a budgeting and advanced budgeting and forecasting tool around that. So we help with seamless integration to virtually any source system that's out there. We can change data within seconds and see those changes instantly. So not only modeling the data, which is important, which is a very time consuming process, just as much as integration of data, we help streamline that so you're up and running in minutes, not weeks, not months, not years, minutes. And ultimately creating that simulated world. What if this happens? And that's what's, that is the most important thing to take away from today is being able to look at all of your reporting in Power BI if you're using it today is really all output and wonderful. But you want to be able to change that data without affecting your source system. Nobody would ever go into their source system like your accounting system, make a change just to see what would happen. That just wouldn't make any sense. And it would be an auditor's nightmare if that was allowed. What Actaris and Power BI are doing is we're creating a staging environment, but it's still connected to that source system. So you're seeing that real-time data come in. But now what you can do is you can start to manipulate that data without affecting that source system. So you get to answer questions, as I mentioned earlier, well, what happens if I do this? You can actually do that. You can actually perform that simulation within Power BI or Excel and see the impact this is going to have. Or you can actually see what's going to happen before you actually make a decision. Just imagine a world if, if someone comes to you and asks, well, what if this, well, what if this happens? And with, without having to do anything other than go into your existing reports, change that, what, whatever that element is, and then see the impact to give them the best information to make that decision and have the confidence that the decision is accurate. That is a very powerful world. And, and then you leave, leap into AI and have AI run all these different types of simulations. But you have to start somewhere. You have to start with automated data integration, data modeling, output, what is the, what is the view of the KPIs that are important to the business, real-time simulation, and then getting to a point of leveraging AI to help bring all of that together and be more productive. Now, when we think about Power BI, as I mentioned earlier, it's all about outputs. That's what it was designed for. Get the data in somehow, build your data models, and then lastly, create visualizations that make sense for your use case. Now, there are a lot of traditional planning solutions that are out there that don't necessarily represent real time. We did, a lot, we did a lot of interviews with CFOs, uh, financial individuals, and we asked them, because they were using an existing planning solution, we asked them a very simple question. Where are you doing all of your reporting? Most of them said, well, we export it out of our planning solution, we put it into a business intelligence tool because it's easier. No different than we usually export data out of a system and put it into Excel because it's easier to manipulate that data. Why not stay within those tools? Why have another system that we have to learn and go down that road? Why not use the existing tools that have already spent years and years and years learning? Why not stay there? That's what Actaris is doing. We're helping teams plan using all these familiar tools. And that 
is great because you can support yourself. So it's all about self-service. You don't have to rely really on an external consultant to help you. Um, you know, they can, they can help you build, but you don't need them from a long-term perspective. So you start reducing your cost that way. And you can start building all these different platforms and all these different applications using what's laying around it within your four walls. Now, again, just going back to more of the, the static planning processes, it's, it's very difficult to handle manual entry around reconciliation. Uh, you may not, you may have a lot of trouble connecting to a lot of other systems to bring in that complete story. Maybe you start with financial planning, but you don't get into HR planning or sales planning or inventory planning because it's just too difficult. And it took you already six to 12 months to implement financial planning. Well, yes, you may be getting some value out of that, but there's more value with unlocking multiple departments and bringing that data to, to, together. And that's really where Actaris and Power BI come into play, is creating this dynamic real-time modification or augmentation. So you're augmenting data and you're able to see the impact that it has in real time. No exporting, no importing needed in this process. You make a change, you save that change, you see the impact that it has on all the output visuals that you've created. So that is what we call the write back capability. So writing data back consistently to a structured single source of truth by directly editing data in Power BI. Now that sentence alone is extremely powerful because again, Power BI has always been an output mechanism. Now with Actaris, we've turned it into a two-way street, meaning not only can you see the data, now you can start entering data into Power BI, save that to a single source of truth that everyone was working off of, and, in the, and then ultimately see the impact that it has across all the different types of reports that you have across the organization. You can make changes to underlying data sets. You can make changes to uh, real-time data structures within a database, which then ultimately can then update your source system within a, with a certain incremental refresh. Re remember, we're not writing back to the source system. We're writing back to a single source of truth that we have created as a staging layer. That's what we're writing back to. But sometimes we do get people that want to see this data within their accounting system, or they want to see this data within their, their data warehouse. So we could, since it's in a SQL database, which we'll get into in just a second, it, that's all it is. It's a SQL database. It's, it's not a proprietary database. We want this to be open for everyone. So that way they can use their internal expertise to communicate this across the organization, either through reporting, through Excel, or even just to a data warehouse. And so what Actaris is bringing to the table on top of Power BI is really that optimal data warehouse and all the different structures that go around it. Now, this slide is one of my favorite because it actually captures all of the use cases that you can apply using Actaris and Power BI together. We all know Power BI for the most part. We understand the flexibility of Power BI. We understand the flexibility of Excel and all the different types of reports that we can create. That's not gonna go away. But imagine a world now with all of those different types of reports of you being able to enter data. So we have universities that are creating applications like student enrollment planning. We have franchise companies that are using us for franchise planning. So the, the example there is that they had a, a bunch of different stores that were filling out Excel templates. They would then submit those Excel templates to what is known as a brand president. That brand president would fill in additional information. They would then submit that to corporate. Corporate then would fill out information and then they would run their own simulation. That entire process took months just to consolidate. Now, fast forward, implementing Actaris, they're still using Excel. The only difference is when they're keying in data into Excel and they're hitting commit, that's committing back to a database. That database is what the brand president sees. That's what the corporate sees. So everyone sees that information as it's being submitted. And of course, you can then embed workflow. So you're still using the same tools, Power BI and Excel. We're just enabling those tools now to enter data, which then can bring that full circle back to all of the output visuals that are important to the business. We have oil and gas companies that are using us for carbon emissions planning. So just wanted to kind of give everyone a real big idea that it's not just financial planning. Yes, that is the topic of today's webinar, and that's going to be our primary focus. But it's so much more than that. And just being able to keep everything in one place, 
systems that you already know inside out. You've already invested a ton of time learning Excel and Power BI. We are allowing teams to continue to use these platforms, but advance their skill set by making it easier, more effective to aggregate data, build the data models, and enable that right back capability. So when we think about really the value that Actaris is bringing organizations, it's really this interconnected modeling, being able to understand what is important to finance, what is important to sales, what is important to HR, and then connecting those worlds together. And we really want to help teams plan using what they're already familiar with. I think that is really a huge value where the learning curve is significantly less. We're all humans. We don't like change. You tell us to use a new system. Yes, we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to end up using it, but it's not going to be an easy task. If we've already learned Excel and Power BI, why not continue to use the strengths of those? And then Actaris on top of that is just giving you the an endless possibilities of what you actually would like to create. Now, as I've mentioned multiple times today, the real problem that organizations have is the fact that their data is everywhere. There's no clear indication of where that is. Now, some organizations, yes, they have data warehouses. Yes, they have a clean data set, but they still, they still struggle because it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to maintain because you will still have a department over here that's using Excel. They're not using the data warehouse. They have all these different um, instances that might happen. And ultimately, when you're using the tools that you currently have, you might wish that you had additional functionality. One of those things is like top-down versus bottom-up forecasting, three-way logic forecasting. If I make a change here, how does it impact my balance sheet, my income statement, my cash flow statement, that real-time simulation? Again, we're not talking about doing making a change in a, an existing planning solution, then exporting the data out, putting it into Power BI. It's you make the change in Power BI, you hit save, in one second, you're able to see the, the data change. It's extremely fast and extremely beneficial because it's all about saving time. There's only so many hours in a, in a day. We need to make sure that we're optimizing that time constraint. So we actually have a three-step process to tackle a lot of the problems that we've, we've discussed today. And the three-step process is aggregate data. We have to get the data from these source systems. We're not getting rid of all of your source systems. You're still gonna have an accounting system. You're still gonna have a CRM solution. You're still gonna have an HRIS system. We need to pull data, valuable data from those applications. Well, once we pull all of that data, so now you have HR data, sales data, and finance data, you've now just put this in a single place. But it doesn't make sense because HR data is different from finance data, which is different from sales data. So that's where the data modeling comes into play, setting up specific models for each of these source systems or each of these use cases, and then connecting the two together using unique identifiers. Once you have that optimal data model, then we get into the planning process. So we're, we're, we have the data coming in on a frequent basis into our data models. We're using Power BI and Excel to bring that data to life, and then ultimately making changes to it. Now, I'm a more visual person. I've done a lot of talking today about this whole process. So let me kind of give you an idea of what this looks like in a more visual format. So starting kind of on the left-hand side of this slide here, which is just talking about a lot of the source systems that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. What we need to do is we need to connect to those source systems, and we then need to normalize that back into that single source of truth, which is a traditional SQL database. Now, that SQL database can reside on our cloud environment, your cloud environment, or on-prem. This is the beauty of Microsoft and the scalability of this. Once we have all that data in that SQL database, then we connect it to front end tools that people are already familiar with, Power BI and Excel. The, the last piece is really the ability for users now to enter that data and have that data written back to that SQL database. Once again, we're not writing back to your source systems we're writing back to a staging layer, which is taking a copy of your source system data so you can run all of your analytics. Now, what I would like to do is walk everyone through a demo. I think this is why everyone really came to today's session. Uh, we understand all the pain points. We talk about these pain points on a regular basis. Let's kind of see this in action. And really the, the thing that we're gonna talk about today 
is that write back capability from Power BI to that SQL database. So here we have a Power BI report and we start off in most of our implementations creating a landing page. Everyone wants a menu, everyone wants a landing page so they can quickly navigate to where they want. One of the, one of the coolest features of Power BI is the fact that you only need to build what you are gonna utilize. It's not like you're going out and buying a, a solution and you end up paying 100% of that bill and only using 30% of those features. You build what you need, which means that the learning curve is significantly less and the user adoption increases significantly. I don't care how good a system is, if your users do not adopt it, it's meaningless. So what's great about Power BI is that you can create unique interfaces for different people. So going back to that franchise example that I was just referring to, you have the store locations, which have their own proprietary data entry screens, still using Excel or Power BI. You have your brand president, which wants again, more sophisticated reporting, so they can make sure that the stores are entering in the data accurately. They have their own proprietary um, UI built around Power BI and Excel. And then you have corporate that wants to look at information differently as well. Well, if you're using the same system, the stores might have to click 12 different times to get to the screen that they need to enter data into. The brand president has to click maybe three different times to get where they're needed. And the, the corporate, maybe they launch into a dashboard, but it's not as flexible. So you're putting all these different you know, issues together. It compounds and people then end up not using all of the features that that, that, pro, that program has. And the beauty of, of Power BI is the fact that you can design exactly what you need. You don't have to go over or above that and you can grow as well. You can build what you need today, but it's adaptable for what you are gonna need in the future. So here we have kind of a XP&A dashboard that will cover financial planning, sales planning, driver-based planning, HR planning, among other things. The other really cool thing is that we have this financial KPI versus workflow status. When we toggle this, what we can see is that you actually can track the quality of data in each of these specific modules. So for example, financial planning, 50% of our entities or organizations or branches or people have already submitted their forecast. So this goes back to workflow. 25% are still in progress and 25% haven't even started yet. So it's a great mechanism to just understand the quality of the data before you actually jump into that module, which is important because we don't wanna be making decisions if we know that 50% of our, our locations haven't even finalized their forecast yet, but we still wanna be able to get into details and slice and dice that information. So by clicking on financial planning, it's gonna bring up the next kind of viewing, which is really more output related. So here we have our top p &L KPIs that are important to us. We have revenues, we have expenses. We're also comparing actual to budget information. We have a detailed p &L statement over here to the right, capturing prior year actual to base to target, which we can control utilizing what is known as slicers. So for example, if I only want to look at budget data, I can click on budget. Or if I want to be able to toggle this to a different dimension that goes back to the data model, how am I going to slice and dice this? Maybe I want to look at forecasted information or a COVID-19 uh, scenario. So you do have that flexibility of being able to select exactly what you want to look at or what you want to compare. Oops, sorry. Let me just uh, go here and change this to forecast. So when you make this modification in Power BI and you select forecast, you'll notice that all of the charts will ultimately change. So now what they're gonna show is not just actual versus budget, now they're gonna show actual to forecast or actual to some sort of scenario that you've created. So this is all output. This is exactly what Power BI is designed for. It's instantly giving you visibility into your data so you can get down to the granular elements of your information, but have that consolidated all the way up to the top level, utilizing different mechanisms. Now, down below here, we have this edit button. As soon as we click on edit, what we're going to introduce today is the first input visual within Power BI. It's called the Actaris Matrix Visual. 
It works very similar to any other matrix visual that you may be familiar with today, uh, specifically in Power BI. You have your rows and you have your columns. So your rows and columns are defined by you. It's completely up to you and how you want to be able to construct your data. Do you want your rows to be DL accounts? Do you want your rows to be projects or individual people? It's completely up to you. And then across the top, you have your date structures. So being able to look at yearly, monthly, quarterly, or any combination. In the upper left-hand corner of this visual, you can now see there's an edit button. What this is gonna allow me to do is actually enter data into my Power BI visual. There's a variety of shortcuts that will make your planning life easier. One of those shortcuts is I 10%, which means that you're actually going to increase that value by 10%. There's another function called R and then a number, let's say R 4000. What it's doing is it's actually entering that number to the right or to the end of that period. To get access to all the different shortcuts, there's this little help icon here in the upper right-hand corner of the visual. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to cover all of these today, but there's definitely a lot of them like multi-select, conditional formatting, uh, increases and decreases as I, as I showed earlier, being additive, uh, all the above. Another really cool feature is the fact that you can right-click on this and go ahead and revert back to its original number. So if you made a mistake for whatever reason, you can go ahead and click on that and revert back to its original. You can also right click and add a comment directly in Power BI. So what you're doing here is that when you enter a comment, it's gonna enter a comment at the intersection of the data points or the dimensions that we talked about within the data model. So it's gonna know that I'm entering a comment at this GL account for this date, for this cost center, for this department. So those are your dimensions. So the comment is stored at that intersection of data. What's great is that these comments are also synchronized back to that single source of truth, which means you can bring that right back into a Power BI template. So we have a lot of clients that will create unique dashboards that will slice and dice all their comments across the organization. So I wanna be able to narrow in on a specific department and then a specific, a specific user. What are the comments that they've made across our budgeting cycle. And then last but not least, being able to interact by collapsing revenue in this case, that's our parents, and then there's children underneath. But I wanna be able to plan what is known as top down versus bottom up. Before we did bottom up, meaning the lowest level of our hierarchy, that's where we're entering in data, which is very common. But we also want the flexibility of being able to do this at the highest level, so at our parent level. So in this case, revenue, let's say that I want to increase revenue by 10%. Same concept, it's going to automatically calculate. Now, when I'm done and I've, done, and I've entered in all the data that I need, this is where that save button comes in play. When I hit save, this is what's going to write it back to a single source of truth, that SQL database that I mentioned earlier. And instantly, all of your output visuals that you have connected to that budget category, that forecast category, will ultimately change. So you're leveraging the power of Power BI and all the output capabilities that it, it has, plus now the input capabilities that Actaris offers to really create a robust XPNA solution. Now, the next kind of component in a planning environment is really workflow. Being able to understand which departments need to enter data, and as soon as they're done entering that data, you want to be able to ad, ad hoc change that workflow. So that is also another really important element. Um, and you can see, as we mentioned earlier, being able to see who has submitted a forecast, who has, uh, who's still waiting in progress, and, and so forth. Uh, so just for time purposes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over um, workflow, but it obviously is a very important element. We can do workflow, email notifications that could be sent out. But the last thing I want to talk about it, with related to financial planning is this copy wizard functionality. In a system, you want to have the flexibility of creating ad hoc scenarios. It can be very difficult in certain cases to do this, and we try to make it as easy as possible. So within Power BI, I can go ahead and use this second input visual of the day, which is called our table edit visual. 
And what I've done is I've hit this little plus sign in Power BI, and now I'm gonna call this my budget one, two, three scenario. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. This is then gonna write back to that SQL database. Well, now that scenario is blank. There is no base to it. But what you can do is you can use the third Power BI visual of the day, um, which is going to be the copy wizard. So what Actaris is doing is we're allowing users to create different conditions. And those conditions would be, oh, I wanna take my actual information from last year, last quarter for, la for the last department. I wanna take actual, that's what I'm copying from, and I'm gonna paste that into my new budget one, two, three as a baseline. Then you can use the matrix visual to update that information simultaneously. So the, the goal here is to leverage output visuals and Actaris input visuals together to create a very unique experience and a revolutionary XP &A solution. A couple more things that I would like to talk about. One of them is driver-based planning. Every business has their own unique drivers. Think of these as variables, quantity, times price. Well, you, you multiply those two, you then get revenue in its basic form. So drivers could be FX rates, they could be quantities, they could be tariffs, um, they could be hospital bed utilization for healthcare, sky's the limit. When we think about drivers in this particular demo environment, we have a list of all of our different products along the left-hand side. This can also be projects if you wanted to, but in this case, it's products. And I can select a specific product and I can forecast or plan just for that product, or I can do all products at the same time. You're gonna have the output, what, again, information that is important to driver-based planning, such as what's the total quantity across all products, what's the average price, what's the average cost, what's our gross profit percentage, right? All these different KPIs, which is again, what is great about Power BI is bringing that information to the surface. And then the fourth visual of the day, that which is enabled for input or write back, is called our visual planning visual. So this allows users to graphically change data versus typing in numbers, which you saw earlier in the matrix example. So here, what I can do is I can put this visual into edit mode, which now allows me to change numbers dynamically. So in the dark blue line, this is your actual data. In the light blue line, this is your forecast data. You have uh, both of them represented here. So we have the light blue, which is again, our budget or scenario, whatever scenario we have selected. And then underneath that is our actual, so we can see if we're on target based on last year's information. Well, what you're gonna notice is as soon as I take a data point and drag it up or down, as you'll see that this number automatically changes. So it's reflecting that change, also being able to still keep that actual number static. So allowing yourself to visually plan certain parts of your business. Another really cool feature is being able to lock this number. A lot of different use cases for this. We have some clients that they're doing sales planning and they have a, a certain sales quota and that sales quota is consistent across the year. Let's use a million dollars as that sales quota. But let's say sales rep A, doesn't sell anything for the first three months. But that doesn't mean that their sales quota is gonna go down. All that means is that you need to reallocate for the next nine months what they need to sell to still achieve that million dollar quota. And so this locking mechanism is gonna lock this number. Again, this could be a sales quota. This could also be the number of widgets that I can produce in a given year. Keep your eye on this data point right here where my cursor is, this 3,000. When I move this data point up or down, you're gonna see that's also going to change. So it goes to 2.2, 2.9, 3.1. Because what it's doing is it's still keeping this number static because that's what we're trying to achieve. But then it's proportionally allocating to all the children entity or splashing these values to all the children entity underneath. So with one modification to one of these, these points, you could essentially be writing back millions and millions of different data points, changing those instantaneously and seeing the impact that this has on all of your output visuals. Now you're not forced into a specific visual. You're gonna use different visuals for different purposes, no different than what you get with Power BI today. There's sometimes you're gonna use a bar chart, there's sometimes you're gonna use a pie chart. The idea here, these input visuals, you can use together. 
So instead of me visually planning my drivers, maybe you want to be able to enter in numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually, again, demo the matrix visual. So here we have order quantity, sales price, and cost price. All three of them are different, but they're still drivers to our business. And if I wanted to change the sales price of a product, whatever that product may be, so let's say this first product, again, you're going to come in and you're going to hit this edit button, and you're going to then change the number for that product. So very, very simple on being able to modify data in real time. So I can use that R function, type in 500. I've now changed this product price to 500. I hit save. This is then going to be used in different parts of my data model. So this price is then going to be multiplied by quantity. It's going to subtract out my cost so I can understand the total gross profit that I may have. And then last but not least, what I would like to uh, kind of jump into is HR planning. Now, HR has an impact on financial planning. Hiring new people, moving people from one department to another department, one region to another region, all of this has an impact on finance and the bottom line. So by creating a single environment using these familiar tools, we get to perform that type of process. So just like finance, just like sales, HR wants to see output. They want to be able to track, well, what are my HR expenses by date? What are my HR expense or uh, HR metrics by department? What are my expenses by employee? How many employees do I have? What was my budget for my employees this year versus last year? So all of these great, great KPIs. But what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to be able to modify data in certain cases. Again, it's all about planning for the future. It's simulating a world that we think is going to happen. We all know that you have to hire five people. We're not going to hire five people today, but over the next six months, maybe we're going to hire five people. And we want to be able to see the impact today to make sure that we're making the right decision of hiring those five people. Again, we wouldn't go back to our source system, add those five people hypothetically, see the impact, then delete them later. That doesn't make any sense. What we're doing is we're taking, again, a copy of that data. So now we can say, okay, here's a list of all of our employees. Here's our employee names. Here's the departments each employee works for. Here's the salary, a monthly salary for all these employees. Well, I can come into this matrix style visual and I can say, well, this employee is going to get a merit increase or a bonus in May. And I can type that in. Or down below, we have our table edit visual, which is going to represent all of the different employees that we have and the underlying metadata associated with each employee. What's their birthday? What department do they work for? What's their start date, end date? What vacation do they have? What fringe benefits do they, they have? All of that can be captured in one place, output. But now from an input side, we want to be able to make changes. Well, what if Ronald Allison, as an example, no longer works in the finance department? They now work in the engineering department. That simple change is effective for HR, but it also needs to be communicated to finance because finance then needs to reallocate the budget to the engineering department. Or we can make a simple change like their salary is going to increase from 5640 to 6000 Again, very important for HR to keep track of this, but equally as important for finance to be able to see the impact that this has within the PL and the expense line items. So when I simply make this change, I can go ahead and hit that save button, which is then going to trigger that write back capability. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I want everyone to kind of see how this works. By the way, this has all been done in PowerPoint. Everything that I just demonstrated, the entire system has been demonstrated in PowerPoint. Now, I can go into Power BI service, and I can go ahead and click around. So this is the same exact report. If we go into financial planning, it's going to go right into the financial planning environment. So you can still use Power BI Service. You can still use Power BI Desktop. But the benefit of, of our technology, Acaris's technology, and the fact that we're built around the Microsoft ecosystem is that you can have your entire planning solution in PowerPoint or in Teams, or you can use Excel. That's what's great about Microsoft and Acteris together creating that common ecosystem. When you think about putting together board presentations, or you have input templates that you want to be able to work with a broader team on, you can put these all within PowerPoint. 
and it's a live link to the data. Meaning if anything changes, it's automatically going to change in PowerPoint as well. You don't have to keep creating all these different PowerPoint presentations. You can do it once. And that means that every time that data refreshes or any time someone makes a change, regardless if they're doing this in Teams, in Excel, or in the Power BI interface, that'll ultimately update your PowerPoint presentation. This is extremely powerful. And I'm going to show you how powerful this is in a very simple use case with the the, the last uh, one minute, and then I want to make sure that we uh, see if there's any questions. So let's use, again, we're in PowerPoint here. We have Ronald Allison here. I'm going to go ahead and pull up Excel, and we're going to launch into our Excel online add-in, which, which can be downloaded directly from the Microsoft App Stores, which is right here. So I go ahead and click on that. I'm now going to log into my database. And we're going to use our Office 365 credentials. You don't have to learn a new username, a new password, or a new URL that you need to go to. All of this works with your existing Microsoft, within your existing Microsoft ecosystem. So I've now just logged in to the account, and I'm going to pull up our employee dimension. Very simple. I'm going to load that now into Excel. And you're now instantly able to see a list of all of your employees. And there is Ronald Allison. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change Ronald Allison. I'm going to change it, just add my name at the end. Now, imagine this being a number or a driver. Same concept applies. Here, you can see that it's marked in red, which means that there's a change. I'm going to go ahead and commit those changes. What that means is that it's writing it back to the database. So if I come back to my PowerPoint presentation and I hit refresh, this is now going to show Ronald Allison Mike. I'm going to go ahead and in PowerPoint, make a change. And I'm just going to put my last name, Mike Zach. Now, if I were to go back to Excel, it's automatically going to refresh Excel. Or if I go back to Power BI, so if I went into HR planning, then went into edit mode, went into the um, employee dimension, you're going to see now it's Mike Zach. So it's all of this information that people are updating, regardless of what interface they feel comfortable with, will ultimately change so everyone's working off of that single source of truth. That's the most important thing, which again goes back to aggregating your data from your source systems, building your data model, building your reports for output purposes, and using Actaris on for all of those things, plus that input mechanism of being able to change data and simulate an environment that you think is going to happen. So here we have Power BI, just using our web browser. And here is Ronald Allison, my exact same concept. I'm going to come in here in Power BI, change this to MZ, hit save. Again, if I were to go to Excel, refresh Excel, you're going to see that change. Or if I go back to PowerPoint, hit refresh, you're now going to see that change as well. A lot of this can be automated, the refresh process. I'm doing it manually just to show you the before and after. But it's extremely powerful to see everything in one place. So I wanted to take a quick pause here. Um, I know that we only have a, a couple minutes left. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank everyone for your time today. I hope this was, this was helpful. I hope you um, have lots of questions because you can certainly contact us at sales at not only for to answer your questions, if you want to see a, a deeper demo of how this technology works, or you just have questions about your current use case and you want to see if Actaris can help because we do help outside of, of financial planning uh, or xp &A. There's a lot of use cases that we can talk to you about. And then also we're going to have another webinar next month that's going to capture more of the IBP, Integrated Business Planning, and how all of these worlds kind of come together with a leading expert in, in the market today. So want to first and foremost, thank everyone for their time today. But let's go ahead and see if there's any questions that I can quickly answer. Okay, so there's a lot of them. So unfortunately, we want to so the presentation. Yes, everything will be available. The actual recording will also be available and we can distribute that um, after today's um, session. Okay. So I know that we're, we're at time now. Um, there are a lot of questions. We certainly will download all of these questions and we'll get back to everyone uh, individually. And like I said, the recording will be available. 
Uh, it'll be uploaded to YouTube, so you can watch it in YouTube. I also recommend going to YouTube. To, we have about 100 videos on YouTube that talks about the entire product and how it works and how simplified the process is of creating your data models and also integrating with your existing Power BI templates. So once again, just want to thank everyone for their time today, and I hope you found today's session beneficial.